Ladies and gentlemen, what is going on everybody? This is Joseph Conlon here tonight with your AEW Dynamite Crossroads review on Wednesday, March 3rd, 2021. Tonight, we had the Go Home Show. We went home tonight before AEW Revolution this Sunday. This was a banger of a go-home show. I absolutely loved almost everything on the show. Kudos to all the participants that participated on that show. It kind of felt like your small appetizer a little bit. Kind of felt like you had that pay-per-view vibe tonight. They gave you the small appetizer tonight. And then Sunday, they're going to give you the full cake with the Revolution pay-per-view. So we do have a lot to talk about on this Crossroads edition of AEW Dynamite. But ladies and gentlemen, we got something big. We got a new tag team on Wednesday nights. I'm going to stand up for this one. Oh. You know, I'm going to stand up too. <laughs> there you go. I'm standing up. Here we go. We got a new <laughs> tag team on Wednesday nights. From now on, the new co-host is here. I love his takes on AEW. He's one of my best friends in the wrestling community. Very good friend. Very positive person as well. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to light the fuse and bring the boom and create some dynamite with Wesley Williams. That's right. Woo! That's right. <laughs> the Shills thought, they thought that this was only going to be temporary. They thought one time was enough. Then the second time came, and the house saying go third time's a charm. Right now, we can happily say that this deal is permanent, baby. Jimson right. Conlon, Wesley Williams, every single Wednesday night giving you the best play-by-play -play analysis of AEW Dynamite. It doesn't get any better than that, folks. And no disrespect to my boys, J.D. and Jesse, over on the Office Script podcast. Love those two. Love them dearly. But I got to say, you know, they say they're the greatest tag team in the IWC. And, well, I'm just going to have to, I'm afraid I'm just going to have to disagree there because the true greatest tag team in the IWC is right here, right before your very... And I'm all decked out. As you can see, the AEW shirt is on. All decked out. It's not even the holiday season. I'm all decked out right now. But this is a very special holiday season because you're seeing your boys in action every single Wednesday night. We can officially make this permanent. I've already been on here once, already been on here twice. And then the third time, of course, like I just said, third time's a charm. And every single Wednesday night, myself and Joseph Conlon are going to give you the best play-by-play -play analysis. We're not going to BS you. No more BS, just like the big show, like Paul White shirt says, no more BS. <laughs> no more BS. <laughs> Only straight back every single week, baby. And Joseph, I got to say, man, it's an honor. It's an honor that you chose me. You could have chosen anybody for this role, but you chose me. You chose to stand beside me. And let me tell you, let me be the first to say, you made the smartest decision right there, my friend. And I cannot wait to cover AEW Dynamite, my favorite wrestling show of the week. You already know the best of the best of the best. And let me tell you, I'm looking forward to it. Let's do the damn thing. Damn right. You heard from the man himself. Um... JD and Jesse love them. We got we got to build our chemistry though as a duo on Wednesday night. JD and Jesse they have great chemistry. We're gonna have to build our yep. chemistry. But you know what, dude? We can do it. We can build our chemistry. We, we already we already got it going right here. AEW Dynamite Wednesday nights. We're not gonna bullshit you. Just like the big uh, Paul White shirt says. I almost, I almost called him the Big Show. All right, calm down. Uh, no more. No more. <laughs> but we had. Uh -uh. Let's get let's just talk about this show tonight. We had AEW Dynamite Crossroads. I talked about what I thought of the show. I loved almost everything on the show and they gave you an excellent go home show before a uh, revolution. My friend, what do you think about the show Breezy? I thought AEW hit a massive massive home run tonight with this go home show. But there's one thing AEW does right all the time. It's go home shows. This show was from start to finish. They came in, they knew what they needed to do, and they executed it very, very well. 
And now we head into this Sunday, AEW Revolution. I'm excited. I know you're excited. I hope all of you watching are excited. You're going to be tuning in live on pay-per-view this Sunday night because you know I am. I'm going to be covering in live on Twitter. I cannot wait to see all those great matches come to fruition this Sunday night. Damn right. I can't wait for Revolution. They gave you, like I said earlier, they they gave you a small pay-per-view vibe tonight. To see what they, what's to come on Sunday. They gave you the appetizer tonight. Sunday, they're going to give you the full cake. I truly do believe that. But let's start with this appetizer show that we got tonight. Um, the show started off with the match that everybody was talking about on social media for the past week. It is the mixed tag team match between Cody Rhodes... And Red Velvet against Jade Cargill and Shaquille O'Neal. And I got to be the first to say, I loved the presentation of Jade Cargill's entrance. She has a star written all over her, in my opinion. She has star all over her name, Shaq. He looked great in the entrance um, with his entrance. Got a big ovation. The match started off with Cody Rhodes and Shaquille O'Neal. They did a lockup. Cody then, uh, Shaq shoved Cody away. And then they did another lockup. And Shaq gave Cody a couple chops. He gave him a clothesline. And then uh, Jade, I believe, tagged herself in. So Jade and Red Velvet come in. You know, they did an okay exchange. It wasn't it wasn't perfect or anything. It wasn't great. It was okay. A little bit, I was like, uh, Jay's seeing her for the first time wrestle. You know, she's a little bit green. But then after that exchange between Red Velvet and Jade later on, Shaq and Cody, they both get back in the match. Test of strength. Cody gets him. But then Shaq, he hits another chop to Cody. He then sets up Cody for a powerbomb. And he did a beautiful tribute to Mr. Brody Lee. With the blowing of the kiss. And then he got Cody up for the power bomb. Cody kicked out at two. Then Cody Cody gave Shaq a power slam. He which which was a big deal to a lot of people. I don't know if you heard about this, but last night on the NBA post game, uh, Cody said that he, he was gonna body slam Shaquille O'Neal and like get him like off balance and stuff like that. Shaq was like, that's just that's unrealistic. So Cody did body slam Shaq, but Shaq said he wouldn't be able to do it. And then uh, we get the big spot of the match. Uh, Co- uh, Jade and Red Velvet they actually set up the tables when they were having when they when they were in the ring together. They set up the two tables. Um, Cody. Uh, no, Shaq was standing on the out on the apron. Cody went flying at Shaq, and those two went crashing through those two tables. And I mean, they crashed through the two tables. It was literally a ho- it was literally a holy shit moment. A, it, like if that was in front of a full audience, that would have been a loud holy shit moment. But then we get Jade and Red Velvet back in the ring. Red Velvet looks to put her away. I thought this was going to be it. But Jade kicked out. Jade then got a pump pump handle, a pump kick to Red Velvet. And hit her with the Grand Slam. And ladies and gentlemen, the right person got the pinfall here. Jade Cargill got over in this match. She got the victory over... Uh, Red Velvet for herself and Shaquille O'Neal to win the match. But Shaq was knocked out from those two table spots. He does he did not get up. His eyes were shut. And during the commercial break, uh, they did put him in a gurney. And then Cody Rhodes tweeted out later on in the show, Hope Shaq's okay. Uh, much respect, brother. So I thought this was a great mixed tag team match and a lot of people had their doubts man and i told somebody you know what i don't know if you see this wesley but i said this on twitter i believe monday 
A lot of people said the same thing about Triple H and Stephanie McMahon versus Kurt Angle and Ronda Rousey at WrestleMania. A lot of people were like, that match is not going to be good. I'm not really looking forward to that. That was the best match on WrestleMania 34, in my opinion. And I thought it was the same situation here. This was probably my favorite match of the night. Shaq, he did his stuff. He took those. He took that table spot like an absolute beast. Cody Rhodes, um, if there was one person to have in this match to make all of this work and make this storyline work, uh, it was Cody Rhodes. And I thought he did an excellent job in this match. And it got Jade over and, and she got the win. So I gave my thoughts on the match and what I thought about it. Now we're going to hand it over to Wesley here. Uh, my man, what would you think about this opening mixed tag team match? Well, look, I got to admit, I got to admit, I was one of those people, and there's a lot of them in the community that was against this match happening. If there's one thing I do not like in professional wrestling, it's celebrity matches. I don't care what company it is, whether it's WWE, AEW, New Japan even, I don't want celebrity matches to be a thing. And going into this, you know, I still had my doubts because I was just hoping and praying that this wouldn't be a complete disaster. And thankfully, it wasn't. This match really exceeded my expectations, they went all in and all out for this match. And um, and let me tell you, man, yeah, that table spot, definitely the moment of the match where my jaw dropped to the floor. I could not believe that Cody and Shaq, especially Shaq, took that spot as big as he is, taking a spot like that and taking a bump uh, as hard as that. Uh, made me kind of legitimately worried for uh, his well-being. But uh, let me tell you, man, um, I give kudos to all four competitors. Uh, all four of them shined in this match. They performed in this match the best way they possibly could. And, uh, you know, I, you know, but again, you know, the celebrity matches, uh, you know, Tony, you know, t Tony Khan, you know, don't, you know, please don't more celebrity matches. I'm fine with celebrity appearances. That's all fine and good. I was totally fine with Mike Tyson appearing and doing what he did. That was all fine and good. But celebrity matches still should not be a thing. And AEW, uh, something I just rather not see. But I will say though, this was a very, very hot open to what was a fantastic show tonight. Uh, again, I give credit to all four editors: Red Belt, Jade Cargill, Cody, Shaq. I mean, they all performed their roles very well tonight. So I got to give credit where credit is due, man. Uh, this was a very, very great mixed tag. And like you mentioned about the mixed tag at WrestleMania a few years ago with uh, with Ronda Rousey and. Uh, Kurt Angle versus Triple H, Civil Metal. Uh, people thought that match was going to suck, and it ended up being the best match on the whole WrestleMania card that night, which is pretty insane. But you know, uh, you, B and I both agree, and a lot of other people agree that that match was the best match of that entire night. And uh, this match tonight with uh, Jake Cargill and Cody and uh, Shaq and Red Velvet, all four of them mixing it up, it was a very, very nice showing, and uh, very pleased with the, with the result and with the match itself. Now, before we move on here, I, I do want to get your thoughts on uh, the performance of uh, one Jade Cargill tonight. Um, a lot of people were hyping her up with her appearance. A lot of people said, you know, she, she cuts good promos. A lot of people say she doesn't show enough intensity on her promos. I'm 50-50 about that. I'm not so sure about her. But am I, for tonight, she looked okay in the ring. But... She really stands out as a wrestler and as an individual in AEW. If she can get just a little bit better in the ring and become, you know, a solid in the women's division, I see absolutely big things for Jade Cargill in her AEW future. So I want to get your overall thoughts on um, on Jade's performance tonight, if you if you if you will. Well, uh, when it comes to Jade Cargill, uh, when, he first, when she first showed up and that initial promo she had with Cody, I was not feeling it at all. Uh, that promo to me sounded so forced when she came out and confronted Cody in the middle of the ring. And, uh, you know, I, I got to admit, I mean, she's got an amazing physique. I, I'm not going to discredit her, her uh, you know, workouts or, like, you know, what she does to stay fit. I mean, she clearly is way more fit than I am uh, that, <laughs> than, you know, she's definitely got the, she's definitely got the physique that I'm sure a lot of people would want. And, uh, but as far as her in ring performance tonight, uh, she is still kind of green. 
Uh, I can definitely sense that. She's definitely got some greenness to her, but I thought with certain spots she executed pretty well. Um, I'm still not 100% sold on her just yet. Um, I'm still, I still need a little bit more convincing, but I, I think as far as tonight is concerned, uh, I think she did her part overall pretty well. You know, I, I'm not going to say it was perfect by any means. Like I said, there is still some greenness there, but I think over time, she could probably be a pretty good force in the women's division. Uh, but, you know, again, I'm, I'm not completely sold just yet. I mean, there, I think there's just a little something missing there. It could be the promo ability. Like I mentioned, uh, her initial promo with Cody, I was not feeling it at all. It sounded forced. It sounded it, it, in a company where, you know, promos aren't really scripted. That, that kind of promo sounded pretty scripted to me. But that's just my thoughts on it. Um, but, yeah, we'll, we'll see as time goes on what they do with Jay Cargill. It definitely was a big moment for her tonight, big win for her over Red Velvet. We'll probably see a one-on-one -on -one match with her and Red Velvet uh, in the near future. Uh, we'll see what happens with that. Absolutely. Great stuff in the mixed tag match tonight. Uh, very quickly, we had a tag team match with Ray Phoenix and Pac. I did not know who they went up against, but they got the victory in about two minutes, and this pretty much was a match to confirm that uh, Ray Phoenix and Pac will be in the Casino Tag Team Battle Royale, which is pretty odd to me. I have no idea. Re Phoenix is in a tag team with Pentagon, and he's in there teaming with Pac. Pretty odd to me, but um, I, I guess we don't really have to talk about the match here, do we? Uh, not really. I mean, it was just, you know, your basic squash. I mean, Pac and Phoenix are great. <laughs> Let me, let's get that out there. I mean, they're fun to watch. I mean, I, I love seeing them out there whenever they are on television. Um, I think the full pairing with Phoenix and Pac, I mean, it's I, I think with Pentagon being occupied with the ladder match, I think that's that's kind of why they're doing Pac and Phoenix right now, I'm assuming, because Pentagon, I guess, they're kind of pushing him as a singles for right now, I guess. I'm not, I'm not so, totally, totally sure, but they are all together in a, in a faction with uh, the death triangle so you know i guess it's just kind of a mix-up in a way so yeah so that that was that um when we're gonna move on here we had the press conference between mjf and chris circle and at uh, chris jericho now this was awesome i love this this was funny as shit uh, up until the young bucks <laughs> when the young bucks came out it was all seriousness when it was the press conference it was funny so the first, I, I didn't get all the questions. I didn't get all the answers. I the first dude, uh, his microphone was shut off. I had no idea what he said, but we're gonna skip to that. The second guy that came was uh, Conrad Thompson, and this was funny. MJF was like, "What are you doing here, Turkey Tits?" <laughs> I, dude. <laughs> Dude, I died oh, in man. I died in laughter. I don't even remember the question, but that's what I remember the most out of this this interview was MJF calling Conrad Thompson turkey tits. Oh boy. Yeah. Moving on from that, we had um, a couple of Barstool Sports guys come on and ask the uh, if, if uh, I, I don't even remember the questions, but uh, then Eric Bischoff. He came from the 83 Weeks podcast, and he asked, what is the condition of Papa Buck? MJF is like, we don't care about the condition of Papa Buck. Um, he attacked Chris Jericho two weeks ago, and we were just we were just attacking him back in self-defense. And he said, it wasn't even our idea. So he hands the microphone over to Santana, who cut a pretty decent promo. And um, he talked about how it was stupid for the Young Bucks to even bring their father to AEW and all that stuff. Then the Young Bucks themselves come out. Uh, they are pissed off. The fun and games of this segment is over. They're all seriousness. Nick Jackson said, once you won that tag team battle royal, you, we knew you would come after us. We knew you would come at our friends. But we didn't know that you would come after our father. And you're a sick human for that. And then um, Matt Jackson said, our father is the best father in the world. When he didn't have enough money for us to go to college, he set up a wrestling ring in the backyard for us and made us train every day and never give up. And 
like not give up until we accomplished what we wanted to. And heck, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be in this situation where we were today. And if if we weren't in the situation, maybe they wouldn't be in AEW. And MJF started laughing, and he's like, Matt Jackson was like, "Oh, you're laughing, MJF." Well, if you if, if there was no AEW, you would still be in your your parents' basement begging for a job at, at some restaurant, I think, or whatever he said. But that's not the kicker. The kicker is he then goes to Chris Jericho and he says, "Chris, if there is no if there is no AEW here, what would you be doing? You would probably be jerking the jerking the curtain at the performance center." So that was the line of the promo by Matt Jackson. Then we got into, and then uh, Matt Jackson said, and our father also taught us uh, self-defense. So then they went after uh, the inner circle. Uh, Cutler came in for the brawl. Gallows and Anderson brought out a table and set it up on the stage. The Young Bucks, uh, they had Santana and Ortiz, Jericho and MJF. They ran away. Uh, Nick hit a swan time bomb on Ortiz. And Matt Jackson hit a uh, elbow drop on Santana. Got, putting Proud and Powerful through two tables. And that was the segment. This was an awesome segment. And I don't know about you, dude. But going into last week's show... I, I was not sold on this match. I'm like, oh, okay, it should be a good match, but there's no story uh, background behind the match. The last two weeks, they have done a phenomenal job with the attack on Papa Buck with this segment right here. It feels personal, and it feels like the Young Bucks want to kill uh, MJF and Jericho. So I thought this was an awesome segment, and the floor is yours, man. With this press conference, yeah, I completely agree, man. I mean, this, this segment had everything. It had comedy. It had action. It had seriousness. I mean, it, it just it all blended together so well, and what made a, a fantastic segment. And yeah, I'll, I'm with you, man. I mean, I, I honestly thought, you know, with the Young Bucks when they faced Santana Ortiz, that Santana, Santana Ortiz were gonna win the titles, and we're gonna see an Inner Circle versus Inner Circle match at Revolution, but that wasn't. Pace and we're still, you know, now of course, Bucks versus MJF and Jericho. But uh, everything they did with this press conference, it was so great. Uh, the turkey tits line, I mean, that that made me cackle. And the literal room, I mean, that, the, I'm watching this room. I mean, MJF is freaking gold, man. I, I'm, I'm telling you, if you are not on the MJF bandwagon, I don't know what you guys are smoking. <laughs> like, it's just like you need to, you need to seriously like invest in MJF, like how great he is, man. And Conrad. You know, props to him for showing up and for taking that tonight. Uh, he's, you know, what a guy. Um, and then Jericho, of course, is great as always. And uh, the Young Bucks, uh, Matt Jackson, the promo he cut, best promo he's ever cut in AW. I mean, that that whole, you know, the shots he took at both MJF and Jericho were both equally just like big, big singers. I mean, ones that like definitely can make your jaw drop. And it was just overall, again, it was an overall amazing set, but the table spots were crazy. And it's definitely gotten me more invested in this tag title match this Sunday. Uh, I can't wait to see what they do. You know, could Sammy Guevara possibly make an appearance this Sunday? That's a big question. You know, you got to ask, you know, Sammy Guevara, you know, he, he walked off. He needed to take time away. You know, what if we see him as soon as this Sunday? Who knows? You know, we could see him this Sunday. We could not. You know, Sammy Guevara is still looming out there. You got to think about that. But I'm loving everything they're doing with, with the inner circle and what they have been uh portraying the story as with them because uh it, it's just been keeping you guessing every single week and i love that i love the unpredictability factor with that it's not just like oh it's it's just you know formulaic and it's so predictable and it's boring or whatever it's just it's unpredictable it keeps you wanting more and you gotta love AEW. you gotta appreciate AEW for for doing stuff like this and continuously booking storylines to where it keeps your interest there. So I'm looking forward to this tag title match Sunday. They definitely have got, brought a lot of fire to the feud, and I cannot wait to see it come to blows on Sunday. Yeah, man, I totally agree with everything you said. Like we said, uh, it's not a predict. This storyline we thought would be predictable and formulaic. Like, this is 
I've got to say this was better than the build for the Young Bucks and FTR. I thought that build wasn't really that good. It was just about the dream match. This build has storytelling. It has its personal. And it, it makes both teams absolutely hate each other. And this went from a match to... I, I'm not really looking forward to it. It's on the bottom of my list for what I'm looking forward to. To This is like top three, top five. Yeah matches i'm looking forward to on sunday so awesome stuff here can't wait for that tag team title match on sunday we then got into a six man with ftr and tully blanchard making a return back in the ring so we have shaquille o'neal and tully blanchard wrestling on the sh same show in 2021 what a crazy year man unbelievable they they went up they went up against the jurassic express and by the way, Tully Blanchard was accompanied to the ring by his old manager back in the day, J.J. Dillon. I did not expect Tony Khan to bring in J.J. Dillon to AEW for one night. But man, to the old school wrestling fans, that probably felt really good. But I thought this was, this was decent. This was a decent uh, six-man tag. Uh, FTR and Tully got the win. Tully hit the slingshot suplex on Marco Stunt. That was a highlight of the match. Um, Jungle Boy doing the great work that he always does. Um, and then the ending. I'm going to go right to the ending here. We have a masked man who hit, I believe it was a pair of handcuffs onto Luchasaurus. And then uh, FTR and Tully hit a spine bust, a, a brain buster onto Luchasaurus and Tully Blanchard he got the pinfall over Luchasaurus I don't think it was clean but if it was a clean fall I think a lot of people would have been pretty upset with that outcome but it wasn't a clean outcome it was uh, shenanigans and then after the match I think we all knew who this was going to be it was Sean Spears they all put their hands in the middle. FTR, Tully, Sean Spears, and, and uh, J.J. Dillon. Then at the end, Arn Anderson came out and he gave them the four. Ooh, very interesting. So, I mean, I thought this was a decent six-man tag. Uh, this was basically to get Sean Spears back and and with Tully Blanchard and stuff. So, I thought it was a decent match. What did you think about it? Yeah, uh, I definitely enjoyed the parts with uh, FTR and, and uh, Luchasaurus and Jungle Boy. Two main, they're, they're the four main like stars here within this uh, whole thing. But uh, man, seeing Tully Blanchard uh, rest pretty surreal. <laughs> um, definitely did not have that on my list, like planning on seeing in 2021. But uh, here we are, 67 year old Tully Blanchard on national television wrestling. <laughs> but uh, but I I think. For the role he played in this match, it wasn't too overbearing. It wasn't like it didn't take up too much of the match. I think his spots were pretty well timed, and I, I mean, he still—I gotta admit—he still wrestles pretty okay for a guy who's sixty-seven years <laughs> old. I mean, it's not—it's uh, not easy for a guy that old to be still be wrestling in the, at least a decent what level. But I mean, he was gonna be mixing it up with Marco Stunt because I mean. You know, he, he did mix it up some a little bit, Luke Storrs, Jungle Boy, but mostly it's not because that it makes the most sense really for Tully to to do that at this day and age. But yeah, I thought this was a fun six man tag, and uh, you know, FTR wins with their you know classic shenanigans, and uh, Sean Spears appearing, you know, quite a bit of a surprise because uh, we haven't seen anything of Sean Spears in a very long time on either AEW Dynamite or AEW Dark. Uh, he just he just went. You know, kind of went AWOL and then this disappeared on the scene. Now he's back with blonde hair. He took the Cody Rhodes route. Our boy Cody Rhodes, he's just getting with the guy back with the blonde hair now. But uh, yeah, uh, we could possibly be seeing a four horseman stable. Up. Yeah, that could be very, very soon. Very interesting. It could be one of the. Uh, uh, it's, it's very. It's very it's, yeah, go, go ahead. Oh. <laughs> It's all good. Uh, it could be very well uh, Tony Khan, one of Tony Khan's surprises in the coming weeks and months that he promised in 21, 2021 that we've got so much of uh, this year so far. So, moving on, uh, real quick, 
Tony Schiavone came out. He introduced Paul White, who his t-shirt, his new t-shirt is No More BS. I love it. I absolutely love it. There's shills on the social media that's saying how how terrible the shirt is. Uh, you don't understand what the meaning is. Uh, the people probably think it's no more big uh, bullshit. It's no more big show. So, um, so uh, Paul White talked about how um, you know how uh, his new show AEW Elevation with Tony Giovanni and how he's going to be commentating and sitting down and critiquing some of the young superstars but he said that tony shivani is not the only one who's got the inside scoop and he said that on sunday he's got a big surprise for everybody and he's going to be bringing a hall of famer or a talent worthy of a hall of fame who that is i have no idea a lot of people were saying it's going to be Kurt Angle. I don't know about that. I honestly don't know who this could be. Could this person be the last entrant in the uh, face of the Revolution ladder match? I don't know. We're going to have to see. But really quick, what did you think about this? I thought this definitely piqued a lot of people's interest. I think a lot of people now are talking and they're really wanting to know who this person could very well be. I'm definitely excited to see who it's going to be. Um, I definitely trust AEW to do right by these surprises, like with who could show up. Uh, there's a lot of different options. I saw on Twitter, you know, people mentioned Angle. Uh, you know, something that kind of came to my mind, it could be RVD. You know, RVD was something that, that he's a Hall of Famer. He could show up. Um, I don't know what he's really doing much nowadays. I know he, I think he left Impact. He, he's not really doing anything with Impact anymore. But, uh, and then, you know, I, I seriously doubt this is happening. But somebody did bring up Brock Lesnar. Uh, doubt no. that's happening. No, I, mean, I, I, I think Les, uh, who knows what's going on with Brock Lesnar at this point. There's talk that he could show up. You know, people are wanting him to show up WrestleMania to face Bobby Lashley for the WWE title. I mean, we don't, we don't really know what's going on with Brock Lesnar at this point. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of different options it could be. I, I can't really have a solid answer at this very moment. But uh, I'm definitely going to be intrigued to see who comes out this Sunday night. And uh, Paul White definitely, I think, did a great job here. Uh, peaking peak people's interest, like I said, and uh, I'm very, I'm very happy that he's with AEW, and uh, hopefully we see more of a uh, more of a backstage role and more of a commentator role uh, in AEW, more so than an in-ring aspect. Because I think at this point, I think a lot of us can agree we don't really want to see Paul White in the ring so much, unless it's like you know they book it abs when it's absolutely necessary. But you know, at this stage of the game, you know, Paul White is more useful in a you know, in a, a mentor type of role and a commentator type of role. So we'll, we'll see what happens, but I'm happy for Paul White. You know, he he looks like he's genuinely happy to be with All Elite Wrestling, and, uh, you know, we're happy to have him. <laughs> Absolutely. We're, we're going to move on here because I feel like the next topic, uh, we're going to have a lot to talk about on this. We had the finals of the Women's Eliminator Tournament between Ryo Mizunami, uh, Mizunami, I'm sorry, and Nyla Rose. Uh, now, before I talk about this match, which, by the way, uh, this was probably my second favorite match of the night. This was a hard-hitting matchup, and uh, Ryu, Ryu Nizunami won the match. The right person won here. I might not even talk about the match. I'm going to talk about what I uh, want to get what I get off my chest, which I saw a lot of people express. So, this was a really good match. I'm not going to break it down, but if you... Or like, oh, he said it's a really good match. I want to go check it out. I would definitely go check this match out. It was really good in my opinion. But what I want to talk about is how people were upset of the overall booking and the decision making of the tournament. Oh, it was a waste of time. Oh, it sucked. For those of you saying that it sucked, the women's tournament, all right? The women's tournament has produced... Some of the best women's matches in AEW so far uh, this year. We've seen Serena Deeb versus Riho, my favorite overall match. Thunder Rosa versus Riho, which was last Sunday on Bleacher Report Live. Uh, Britt Baker versus Nyla Rose was a really good match last week. And uh, we, we saw a lot of on the Japanese side, you know, uh, Ryu Nizunami. I'm a fan of her now. I, I like her work. Uh, Yuka Sakazaki, 
Uh, everybody, I think, knows who she is. Uh, she is very good. Maki Ito, who I got news on coming on this Saturday on the podcast. So we're going to talk about her Saturday. But a lot of people were upset about the outcome. And, oh, Nyla Rose is in the finals. Why? I think it was because of the, like who fits for Nizunami best. Because Dave Meltzer had reported that the reason Ryu was in the finals was because she was the only person on the Japanese side who was who was coming to America. So when Tony Khan was like, why not bring her over to America and, you know, have her in the finals, we'll put her over Nyla Rose, and she can have a match with Sheeta for the women's title at Revolution. So I think the reason Nyla Rose was in the finals was just for the good, the, the better match for Nizunami. She was never in the match. She was never in this to win the tournament and go on and face Sheeta for a third time on pay-per-view with Nyla Rose. Nobody wants to see that, and that would have been a terrible decision. If Nyla Rose had won tonight, I, I would have shit all over this. I would have been like the women's tournament. Bad. So, wh what are your thoughts on everything that I just talked about and, and the match that happened tonight? Nyla Rose and Ryu Mizunami was very, very good. Uh, I'm not discrediting what these women did for the finals. Um, I have really soured on this tournament. Um, I, I, initially, I had Britt Baker winning this whole thing. It kind of, to me, made it the, the most sense because, you know, she got a big win over Thunder Rose at Beach Break. And she's got all this momentum carrying uh, her. And that she had with Nyla Rose uh, from, I think it was like last Wednesday. They, uh, they I mean, they tore it up. You know, they, they had a great match there, and uh, I was very surprised that Nyla Rose had beat her, so Britt Baker was gone, so I was like, okay, well, there goes my first pick, and then so I saw Thunder Rose still was on the tournament, she beat Rio, so I was like, okay, maybe Thunder Rose will make the finals, and the, then she ends up losing to Nyla Rose, and so that at that point is when I really started to sour on this whole tournament. Now, as far as the Japanese side goes, the Joshi side, I'm, I'm not a big, avid Joshi wrestling person, you know, I don't got on the way to watch Stardom. I'm just gonna go ahead and admit that. Me neither. Um, I already watch enough wrestling as it is, Same. <laughs> so it's, it's I, I can't really take the time to really go out and watch starting. But I will say this: the one Joshi wrestler I'm super high on is Vinny. Vinny Ooh. freaking rules! If you guys have not seen Vinny, this woman's only 21 years old and she is so great at what she does. I was that match she had with Emi Sakura in the first round. I loved it. That, that, to me, as far as the, J the Joshi side goes, that was my favorite match on the Joshi side. That that match, like, I'll even give Emi, Emi Sakura credit. I don't even like Emi Sakura because, because I, I just don't like her whole Freddie Mercury cosplay gimmick. But uh, she, I, I'll even give her credit that she really just worked well. She didn't gimmick it up too much in that match. But, uh, you know, I, I think with um, Rio winning here, Rio, Rio Mizunami, I, I think this has Kenny Omega all behind it. You know, Kenny Omega is so huge on the Joshi wrestling and uh he's so big on the on the japanese women's wrestling that uh he i think he kind of had a big hand in how this tournament was booked uh personally i wouldn't have really booked it the way that they booked it i know not everybody's gonna agree with me on that but you know it's my honest opinion i mean i i feel like having Britt baker thunder Rose, I, I get you want to get the japanese women you know more japanese women known to the american side of things but to me, I just feel like if you had like either Thunder Rosa or Britt Baker win, you know, you could have made for, I guess, a better match or revolution. We'll see how things go Sunday. I mean, I can't really judge the match yet because we haven't seen it. But uh, Sheeta versus Miss Tummy is the women's title match for Sunday. We'll see how it goes. Um, you know, I, I just want this AEW's women's division to be better. You know, I mean, I know AEW is trying to work on it, but... I mean, they really need to get in the full swing with things because you look at, like, NXT and their women's division, I mean, they're flourishing. I mean, they just had a tie of Valkyrie. I mean, just when you think that women's division can't get any better, they go and sign, like, even more great women's on. And then AEW, that's the thing. They need to, they need to uh, roll the ball more of getting more of these women's talent that are available and getting them into their company, you know? So, you know, overall, I mean, like I said, the finals match was very good. But uh, this tournament, to me, I, I just would have gone about certain things differently. But uh, we'll see what happens Sunday. I'm, I'm hoping for a good, good match. Uh, I feel like Sheeta, you know, I haven't really been too high on her whole reign. I feel like AEW's kind of put her in the background a lot. 
when it comes to her title reign. I feel like they could have booked her better, but I'm just I'm wanting better for this women's division, and hopefully we start to see that more and more as the weeks go by. Yeah, I agree with you on Sheeta's reign. It's it's good, but at the same same time, it's like uh, she's been the champion forever. Who she, who she she's she's had matches with Thunder Rosa and uh, uh, Penelope Ford and all that, but it feels predictable. That I think we all know eventually Britt Baker is the one to beat Cheetah, but I don't know. That's just me. Uh, we'll see what happens Sunday with the women's title match. Uh, should be a good match. Uh, really quickly here, uh, just because uh, I, I want to get moving on the next two matches, we had a, a Sting interview, and then Ricky Starks came out and, and interrupted him, and he cut a promo on Sting saying, oh, you still got it, but you're not an icon. And then he slapped Sting and Ricky Starks, and Sting started the brawl. Sting hit the Stinger Splash. Then uh, Hobbs and, and Hook came out. Cage then came out. Darby Allen came for the save. And Darby Allen and Sting, uh, the boys in paint, stood tall tonight. Uh, very quickly, what did you think about this match? Well, I thought this okay. was a you know, very segment. short, sweet segment, um, you know, heading into the street fight on Sunday. Uh, I, yeah, I, I mean, they've basically done all they could really do to hype up the street fight on Sunday. So, uh, I, I definitely love what they've been doing in recent weeks with this. But it's not just been Sting coming out with the bat and pointing at uh, Team Taz. You know, I'm happy they've been adding more layers now finally to it. And uh, I'm very, very excited for the street fight on Sunday with uh, Starks and Cage versus Sting and Darby. Sting's looking good, man. He's looking good. He's another guy who's who's up there in age, and he, he still uh, is looking good. And I'm sure AEW made sure that he would be medically cleared and good to go for the street fight. And now, I don't know if this is going to be cinematic or not. Um, we'll see what happens when we get to that street fight on Sunday. But uh, I know there's talks about it being a cinematic match to uh, help out Sting with him being older now, and he can't uh, can move around or bump as well. But, I mean, he's really shown in these recent weeks that, man, he can still go at a pretty uh, solid level. I mean, the Singer Splash, the Scorpion Death Drop, the Scorpion Death Lock, they all look very, very solid. I mean, so, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens on Sunday. But I, I'm, I'm very high on the, this match. Uh, it's one of the matches I'm most looking forward to going into Sunday. And uh, it's going to be it's gonna be very fun. It's going to be very brutal. And uh, we'll see what they do. Yeah, absolutely. Um, next, we had the Face of the Revolution qualifying match with 10 of the Dark Order versus Max Caster. Uh, it was a fine match. It is what it was. Uh, it was fine overall, but uh, I was legit a little bit shocked to see Max Cast get the win. I thought Ten would get his moment here, go on to that ladder match at Revolution because I what I thought this was is I thought this was going to be an award from Tony Khan to Ten for like you know taking care of Negative One, being like a brother to Negative One. And, and being a, taking care of like Amanda after the, the unfortunate passing of Brody Lee, he's been there for uh, uh, the Huber family. And I thought this was going to be Tony Khan's award to him was like, you know, you've done great things for this family. You've shown this family so much love. Uh, my award, I I'm going to put you in this big ladder match on, su on Sunday. We did not get that. I what we did get was Jack Evans. Of TH2 came out and hit the boom box to the head of Preston Vance 10. Max Caster sees 10's knocked out. He pins him. And Max Caster's going on to the ladder match on Sunday. Legit shocked for that. I thought the acclaimed were going to be um, in the uh, casino battle, uh, tag team battle royale. So, you know, good for Max Caster, I guess. I, I don't see him winning the match at all. But, you know, it's, it shows that uh, Tony Khan sees a lot in the acclaimed, and Tony Khan sees a lot in Max Caster in particular. So, what did you think about this match? Yeah, I thought it was a good match. Um, you know, nothing too crazy, just a you know, good to be there. I was very surprised that Max Caster won. I legitimately thought we were actually going to see 10 in the ladder match on Sunday. I think that would have been really cool. But we got Max Caster... Uh, and I guess, we, you know, with uh, Jack Evans interfering the way that he did, you know, it, it ties into the whole Matt Hardy feuding with the Dark Order and Hangman Bay. It ties into that. So 
it, it's just kind of adding more of a bit of a more fire to that feud. But uh, we'll see how Max Caster shines in the ladder match. I, I'm, I'm with you there. I don't see him winning, but he could very well be a dark horse in the match. You know, he, he could still be like, you know, have his moments to shine. And I mean, either way, you see it, whoever won this match, it's, it's a huge moment because you got a chance to be in this big time ladder match for a shot at the TMT title against the likes of like a Lance Archer, a Pentagon, a Scorpio Sky, and Cody. I mean, you know, four other guys right there. And then you got the, the sixth participant being announced on Sunday. I mean, it's a big moment. And so I'm, you know, I'm happy for Matt Caster. We'll see how he, uh, how he fares with the, uh, the other five men in the match. But the uh, ladder match is definitely one of the other matches I'm super excited to see uh, on Sunday night. Mm-hmm. Main event, final thing we're going to talk about here tonight. We had Hangman Page. And John Silver of the Dark Order against Matt Hardy and Mark Quinn of Private Party. I thought this was a very good main event. Very good offense by both Quinn and Silver. I love the story told in this match. Matt Hardy did everything he could in his power to not get um, to not get his hands on Hangman Page. He tried to prevent Hangman Page as much as possible. To the point where Mark Quinn felt like a sacrificial lamb to Matt Hardy. And he's like, you know what, Mark? You, you just just go after him the entire match. So to me, it was basically Hangman going with Mark Quinn. And Matt Hardy going with John Silver. Uh, Hangman and Silver got the win. After a buckshot to Mark Quinn. As Hangman Page stares down at Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy then gets a microphone. He beats up Hangman. He says, this is a setup between me and Mark. I hate you, Hangman Page. On Sunday, I'm going to break you financially. Then the Dark Order come out. And then we get all the heel tag teams that are being in the match Sunday. Butcher Blade, uh, you know, uh, TH2, uh, Isaiah Cassidy, Chaos Projects. Then we see the babyface teams come out and all that. We end the show with a big brawl, trying to get the uh, Casino Tag Team uh, Battle Royal over. So, I'm not a fan of Battle Royals. I'm not looking for really. I'm not really looking forward to that match at all. But I did like the ending to this show, and I thought this was a very good main event. What do you think, dude? Yeah, uh, I mean, it wouldn't be AEW without ending the show with a chaotic brawl. That's that's for sure. Uh, but. Uh, I enjoy them, and uh, this was a great way to, to build towards Sunday. Uh, the ma- the main event was very good. Uh, I thought all four men did a good job here, and uh, I'm looking forward to the Matt Hardy uh, Hangman Page match on Sunday. Um, and yeah, I mean, this was a great way to cap off. I, I agree with you the, with the uh, tag team battle royals. I mean, especially since we just saw one on, at Beach Break earlier at, at the start of February, you know, and now it's like we enter- we're entering March now, and you know, we're getting another tag team by Royce. It's kind of kind of weird that we're getting another one. But, uh, yeah, AEW, I, I really wish we would kind of do away with the Battle Royals more because we don't need to see them, like, every single pay-per-view. It's like it's like they feel like it's a necessity we get a, a Battle Royal of some sort on the pay-per-views, which I just don't feel is necessary. You know, not a fan of Battle Royals like you, Joseph, and... Um, yeah, it should still be pretty fun, and uh, I'm I'm super excited for for Revolution on Sunday. My excitement levels are, I mean, are through the roof, man. I mean, I, I just want Sunday to get here already so we can enjoy some great pro wrestling, man. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, AEW, you know, they knocked it out in the park tonight with the show, and I can't. So the night was the mixed tag, I can't... <laughs> but here we are. Uh, the mixed tag was my favorite match of the night. I heard the show off in the hottest way possible, and. Uh, AW man, uh, they they know how to sell you on pay per views. They really do, and I'm just proud to be a fan of this company. And you know, I just cannot wait for Sunday night, man. And we know how to sell the viewers with this review here tonight. That wraps up the review for AEW Dynamite Crossroads. What a review! This is Joseph Conlon here with Wesley Williams. We thank you for watching. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. We got more videos coming up this weekend along with the NXT review with my new co-host for NXT, Cameron Johnson. That will be up tomorrow around 5 o'clock. Then Friday at 4.15, we will have the preview and predictions for AEW Revolution. I will be joined by a good friend, Noah Foster of the No DQ Podcast. He will be on here 
to give his insights on AEW Revolution. Saturday is the big debut of the Big Fight Fuel podcast. You guys are not going to want to miss that. I promise you right now. I've been in one to do this since December. It's finally here. Uh, Revolution weekend debuting the Big Fight Fuel podcast. Can't wait. I already got topics lined up to talk about. And then Sunday night, we're going to wrap it up all here with the Revolution review here on the Big Fight Fuel channel. Uh, dude. Get familiar to this on Wednesday night, man. What a blast. Thank you for coming on tonight. What a blast. This is just the first of many, folks. The first of many. And you, I mean, you're going to bear witness to the best play-by-play -play analysis of AEW Dynamite every single week, like I had mentioned at the beginning of the review. I mean, just like AEW knocked it out of the park with tonight's show, I'd say we knocked it out of the park with this review, wouldn't you say, Joseph? Uh, dude, I'd be crazy to not say that. Yes. And make sure... Folks, you hit that like button. You know, I, I've noticed that the two times, the other two times I've been on here, those those views and those likes have been up. I've noticed. Yes. I'm keeping an eye on it. They've been up. So let's keep that going. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. I'm here for good people. Co-host every single Wednesday night. The best tag team in the IWC. You already know. You already know. And make sure to follow my boy Joseph on Twitter as well. He's got follow him on his socials. And I got my socials as well on Twitter. I live tweet you time my week. Follow me at big underscore West 18. That is lowercase B I G underscore W E S 1 A. Make sure you follow me and follow Joseph. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. And I think that's all I got for you tonight, guys, tonight. So there we go. This is the first of many, like he said, folks. Wesley Williams. We'll be back on the big. Well, he will be back on the big fight field channel next Wednesday for the fallout of Revolution. Make sure you go follow him on Twitter so you don't miss his live tweets on Sunday. This is Joseph Conlon. Have a good night, folks. Stay safe, and as always, stay classy.